Welcome back to Steve's World of Wonders. So I just saw Kingswood. So now I'll head to Moorside. Let's see, where are the ruins? I want to see the ruins. There's Moorside. I'm here. So I have to go all the way up here. Garden and ruins. Picnic table area over here if you bring your lunch, and I did. Make note of that, Steve. There's a spot to eat your lunch. A place in history. It has always seemed to me that the highest joy in life is to be found in some form of public service. That's our 10th Prime Minister. And that's a parking sign. William Lyon Mackenzie King is in his cabinet in 1947. Louis Saint Laurent. Long fences. Alright, so this is Moorside, which is a larger area of his estate. and the rock walls. Really cool. It's a tea room up here. Something's cooking, smells good. There's a restaurant in here as well. Another building back here. old pump. Does this pump work? No, it doesn't work. What's this way? some kind of little cabin down there. We'll go in here in a minute. Serving Canada. Oh, there's a video in there. This is the garage. King was Prime Minister of Canada for 22 years. Birdhouse in the picnic area. building down here. I wonder what that is. I don't really know. An incinerator? Probably. Garbage incinerator? It's gotta be. Alright, let's go back up. That's a garage. Washrooms. Here's a little cafe. 
Cafe Pat, named after his dog. Larger building here, big staircase. Nice green and white striped awnings. There's a garden this way. We'll check that out in a sec. Let's take a look in this building. There's an old piece of furniture. Cultivating the land, harvesting tranquility. The garden at Moorside is in some respects an extension of the veranda, an extra room on the house. While gardening was a work discipline that King felt a regular obligation to take on, the garden was also a space for relaxation. Above all, it was a place that showcases the contrast between culture, civilization and cultivation on one hand, and untamed nature on the other. In King's personal view, each plant, each flower, was a reward, a divine message, a reflection of beauty and care. Friends and guests shared in King's daily rituals, a walk in the gardens, an opportunity to admire the scenic landscape, and the beautiful light and the deep blue color of the sky. Sundial. Time is it? Can't really see the shadow on it. King purchased this part of the property in 1924 from the family of Marjorie Harridge, his friend who had first invited him to the Gatineau Hills 24 years before. The name Moorside is a combination of Edgemoor, the property's former name, and Woodside, the name of the King's family home between 1886 and 1893. After the renovations were completed, King spent his summers here from 1927 to 1943. It is here at Moorside that King brought many of his plans and ideas to fruition, including ideas for landscaping and developing the property that would become an estate. At Moorside, personal interest intertwined with affairs of government. The artifacts and personal objects that are found here tell the story of a man and prime minister, his interests and pleasures and curiosities and concerns. There's a museum in here, Moorside Museum. Piece of British history. Two angels and the bench came from Westminster Abbey in London, England, purchased by Mackenzie King in 1930. The angels are from the mid 19th century and the bench is from the 16th century. This bench, referred to as the mercy seat by King, is the oldest item that he had at his estate. Poor condition when purchased, undergone major restoration. The value of these pieces lies in the fact that they are treasures of the British culture and tradition. So this is the oldest object here. Mm -hmm. 
Driven by a strong belief in dialogue and firm conviction, he introduced major reforms, programs such as family allowance, old age pensions, unemployment insurance, and social welfare were all carefully considered here in the calm and tranquility of his estate. King demonstrated keen skills in negotiation over the 30 years he was leader of the Liberal Party. Signed against book. this piece. This is believed to be a tile from Adolf Hitler's bunker in Berlin, Germany, picked up by Mackenzie King when he toured through. Adolf Hitler's bunker. There's a comic about Mackenzie King. And there's Mackenzie King's hat. Gardening tools from the era, not necessarily from here. Oh, oh you, you first. You first, Mackenzie King. It's your place. You go first. Oh, if you insist. Okay, I'll go up. in spirit. This little office is unique. It was here that King's private secretary worked each day, assisting King with government business. His secretary was also involved in answering some of King's correspondence and transcribing King's personal diary. In the evenings, this room was sometimes used to hold seances. Wars and the limitations of medical science meant that death often struck without warning. Spiritualism offered some answers to counter the emotional turmoil that came with the loss of loved ones. Many claimed to be able to communicate with the spirits of the deceased, sometimes even dearly departed relatives, but also with the spirits of famous people who could provide guidance and advice. My mom is like, she's like really obsessed with balcony. His secretary transcribed King's personal diary in here. We've got sounds of the typewriter, I guess. William Lyon Mackenzie King and his medium spiritualist at a read. There's him and his dog, Pat. This bedroom and balcony provide a view of the surrounding landscape. The guest bedroom was reserved for those who were close to King, such as his sister Jenny, when she came to visit at Moorside. The bedspread is a reproduction of the one made by Jenny for her brother. He often slept in this room, on especially windy nights, as it was much quieter than his own bedroom. Before King occupied the Moorside cottage, his friends Joan and Godfroy Pattison slept here. The couple had developed a special attachment to the beautiful view from this room. Later, King put them up at Shady Hill. Although not without a twinge of remorse, this cottage has since been demolished. Joan was King's best and most loyal friend. For decades, she and King shared a love of nature, hiking, gardening, romantic poetry, and spiritualism. Look at that. Look at that hat rack. Tiny mirror up there. A group of seven paintings on the wall. 
This is King's Bedroom. King's Bedroom was a place of relaxation, but also where he liked to listen to the radio. The old radio sitting at the back of the room was, at the time, a symbol of progress. It was given to him by the president of the Ottawa Electric Company, who also offered to run electrical wires to Kingsmere, bringing electricity to the estate. Very like to listen to the radio. Keep up with everything around the world, as he would need to do as a prime minister. He slept, and he had a view, a view of the garden. That's a cool cartoon of all the, all the politicians of the day. Oh, that's the United Nations. Cart. This is his office. There's his desk. But what's up these steps? Oh, it's just a veranda. Beautiful, crisp October the 13th. The ruins were taken from the pieces of the British American Bank building in Ottawa, 1875. The window on the forest was created from the ground floor window frames. Window on the forest rock garden can be seen through the arches behind this ruin. The window on the forest came from the British American Banknote Company building in Ottawa, which was demolished in 1936. Its style reveals the cultural heritage of a classic era. Its place in the garden marks a change in perspective in terms of garden design. On one side of the window are the formal French garden and English garden, on the other side is the rock garden. The rock garden, designed by Joe Pattison, is a hardy bed of flowers that seems to spring from exposed bedrock. There's a rock garden back there. Ruins of Kingsmere, this way.
Get on a giant rock over there. Ah, here's the ruins here. Is that the archway from the bank? Yes. The main doorway of the bank is right there. The Arc de Triomphe. After dinner, the ladies walked out into the lawn. When I saw them in front of the arch, I was in raptures. Mackenzie King was definitely into romanticism and poetry and nature. So these ruins were kind of a romantic in nature and something for his guests to enjoy. sign up here with Tommy. Let no word or thought ever enter there which was not the holiest and best. Built in 1937, these stones are telling of King's admiration for Canada and England. The mantle, a relic from the Canadian House of Commons that survived the fire of 1916, sits below a stone bearing the crest of the former Speaker of the House of Commons in Westminster, England. Below, as a tribute to his own heritage, the hearth contains stones from the printing office owned by a king's maternal grandfather, William Lyon Mackenzie, one of the leaders of the Upper Canada Rebellion in 1837. If rocks could talk, each stone of the Abbey ruins would have a story to tell. The stones of this ruin originate from the center block of Canada's first parliament buildings, which were destroyed by fire in 1916. Set within this Gothic architecture is a stone tablet with the arms of England. To King having this emblem from England, the mother of parliaments, surrounded by stones of Canada's own House of Parliament, represented a bit of symbolism. Help protect our heritage. Please do not climb these ruins. Everybody's climbing these ruins. Yeah. 
steep hill here after the abbey ruins. I wish I had looked more at the maps I've seen today because I'd like to find the waterfall that's supposed to be around here. I hear running water so maybe that's it. Hopefully I'm going the right way. There's a little rivulet running through there. Hopefully I can find my way back to the Kingsmere. Another little ruin over here. People probably don't notice this one. This is near the outhouses. Is that a, yeah, that's a lion. Okay, so I figured out where the falls are. If you go straight past the garden, there's a trail. I was heading this way, but it's actually this way. So I'm gonna try and see the falls. Let's walk past this garden again, and there should be a, a path to the through the woods to the waterfall this direction. Back here, there's a path. 
this is it here. So this will be my last thing to see and then I'll hop back on the bus. Waterfall. We went to see the waterfalls just at the corner of my property. It would all be a beautiful park and someday I will be blessed by having bought it and left it to the nation. Keep this as a little paradise for the youth and beauty of the capital alike in the summer and winter. April 15th, 1927. April 15th is my birthday. Beautiful day for this. Couldn't be better. I love the fall. It's not too hot. You're not overheating. Nice and crisp and cool. And not too cold. Just right. And look at these colors. I like some of these knotted trees. Look at that. Something has burrowed into it. I just tripped on a stone and nearly twisted my ankle there. Doesn't get much better than this for a, for a trail. It's nice. on this tree. That's what I need, a walking stick. Here's the stream coming up.
So that's it for today in Gatineau Park for Steve's World of Wonders. <laughs> 